best-selling author and tech entrepreneur Sunil Gupta believes we can balance both our personal and work lives by finding dharma, which he defines as your inner calling. The truth is that we have compartmentalized work and well-being, and we've kind of played them off of each other without realizing that both of them are essential for high performance. And so it's time for us to stop playing these things off of each other, and it's time for us to start bringing these two things into harmony for ourselves and for our teams. Such an important conversation right now. Gupta's new book is called Everyday Dharma, Eight Essential Practices for Finding Success and Joy in Everything You Do. He writes that Dharma allows us to, quote, come alive in a brand new way. You feel confident, creative, and caring. Sunil Gupta joins us now. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I absolutely love the book. I'm always trying to find balance. I think everybody's talking about this now with quiet quitting and quiet cutting and all yeah. these work related issues, work-life balance. There's one thing though that struck me in the book, the rhythmic renewal. Mm. I want you to tell people about this because I think when we get into our jobs, we think about having to take big breaks in order yeah. to come back and perform in a high way, but you say that's really not true. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing to know your purpose, know your dharma, it's another thing to stay in it. And one of the things that takes us out of that place often is exhaustion, we yes. just get tired. Yes, I'm very tired. I, we, we, I'm tired, you know? And, 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 you know, one of the things we notice about high performers is that they're not waiting for long breaks. They're not waiting for weekends to rest. They're taking frequent focus breaks every day. In fact, the average high performer, whether that be in business or art or music, takes somewhere around eight breaks every single day, right? Which I know sounds extraordinary, right? It does. Given the world we live in, it's so back to back to back. But one of the ways that I sort of recommend we do this in the book is what I call the 55-5 model, 55-5. Right. For every 55 minutes of work, you're taking five minutes of focused rest. And that's what I like about it because yeah. it's easy to think about it that way. Just simple. And you could be drinking a cup of coffee. You could be breathing if that's your thing. You could be listening to music. Whatever it is that you find restorative, and you might be thinking that that will shrink the amount of time that you're actually spending, right? But you're actually, every one of those five minutes is making the other 55 minutes far more effective, far more productive, far more imaginative, all the qualities that we associate with success. It's fascinating because I saw a documentary recently about places around the world where people are living into their hundreds. Mm -hmm. And it isn't because they're doing big grand things like joining gyms every day. It's because they're getting out, they're moving their bodies every single day. They're doing yeah. small things all the time. So what is the mistake we're all making when we're trying to find Dharma, but we're still stressed <laughs> when it's all done? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, one of the mistakes we make is in thinking that we need to achieve big sort of complex solutions. Right. For sometimes, I think, small things, there's little things we can do in order to, I think, make big gains. You know, look, can I give you an example? Yeah, you yeah. mentioned yeah. taking the small breaks. Yeah. Check, what else? Yeah, so I mean, okay, so Dharma is your inner calling, right? It's your essence. And when you're expressing this essence, you come alive in a brand new way. Right? Michelangelo would look at a block of marble and he would say, your, the sculpture's already inside. And the same thing is true for your dharma. We go looking for it, but it's actually already inside of you. All we need to do is chisel away the layers. And there can be a very simple way to do that, right? And sometimes it's just asking the right questions. So there was a project manager named Mila, and I talk about her in the book. Yeah. She was working inside a big company, right? And she really wanted to be a teacher. That was, her, that was her thing. But she didn't have the financial flexibility to do that. So she felt trapped. And then one day a mentor asks her, what is it specifically about teaching that you love? And just by answering that question, she was able to go beneath the title of teacher and into what she really loves about teaching. And what she realized is that she just loves helping people grow. That's her thing, that's her essence. And you can do that in many different jobs. Exactly. You don't have to go back to school to be a teacher. Exactly, so that's exactly what happened. She went and explored all these different things. She ended up making a very small shift to a training role inside her own company. And once she made that shift, everything changed. She went from dreading her job to waking up with enthusiasm and energy. She became a rising star in the company. Her husband noticed, the kids noticed. The myth, I think, is that sometimes we have to abandon our job yes. in order to transform our life. And mm. oftentimes our dharma is right within our reach. For the millions of people out there who are struggling to make ends meet, you know, I almost feel like it's a privilege to even be at a place where you can think about you know, peace and meditation and what is it that I want. What do you say to those folks? It's all, it's all about the small, it's all about the small things, you know? And, and Dharma is something that we all have access to no matter where you are. You know, my parents both worked in the auto industry for over 30 years. And then after their careers ended, they were like, where's, where's my Dharma, right. right? What am I doing? 
and they were lost. And they ended up taking it up through Bollywood karaoke. <laughs> Bollywood <laughs> karaoke. If it was Friday night, it was Bollywood bash night at the Gupta's three bedroom home in Metro Detroit. <laughs> right? My dad That's became cool. Bollywood kar karaoke coordinator, right? And he didn't have a LinkedIn profile. He didn't get no. a salary, but like it was clear to him and everybody around him, he was living his dharma. Yeah. Sunil Gupta, thank you so much. Thank you. The yeah, book is great. Book. The book Everyday Dharma is on sale tomorrow wherever you like to buy your book.